You all right, Madge? Do I look all right? Can I have a question on sport instead? Uh, uh... Mum, can I have a drink? We haven't got any, darling. We'll be setting off soon. Oh, it's too hot in here. Why don't they get the air conditioning going? Cos they have to have the engines running for that. Why don't they start the engine, then? <sighs> have you any idea what toxic carbon emissions are doing to this world? Don't talk to me about toxic emissions. I was sat next to that child of yours on the plane. I was nearly sick. What do you mean by that? What do you think I mean? It's bad enough with your father sat there farting like a lodging house cat without Julio dropping one every 20 minutes. The air was so thick I could hardly see me hand in front of my face. His name's Coolio. After this lot, that must be it. We've been here ages. Oh, fancy bumping into you here. Hiya. You all right? We all ready for our fabulous free holiday? Oh, Christ, that's all we need, the bloody village people. Go on, keep moving down. You can hardly breathe in here as it is. See you later, love. Schnell, schnell, my fear has spoken. <laughs> Bloody hell. Look who it is. I didn't think they'd be back. Free holiday, isn't it? Can't say no to that, however posh you are. Oh, hello. All back again. Hopefully not such an eventful holiday this year. <laughs> I, uh, You weren't on our flight from Manchester, were you? Um, no, Gatwick, but we had a few problems with our luggage. That miserable wife of yours not still giving you the run around, is she? Uh, not exactly. The last thing I need is to be looking at a sour gob round the pool while I'm trying to enjoy my holiday. <laughs> I know. And I'm saying them bags are Gucci, and if they go missing again, I'll kick your bollocks so hard you'll be able to taste them. <sighs> Jesus, I'm sweating like a rapist. There are no windows in this shitty. Do you mind with the language? There are kiddies present. Chill out, Grandma. It's supposed to be an holiday. Come on, Martin. The back seat's free. And before you ask, that's not an invitation for a quickie before we get there. <laughs> She's joking. She's got a point about the windows. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? I'm not doing out. You cannot reserve some beds with towers in the morning. What are you talking about? You have been here before. You know the rules. Oh, come on, don't be tight. You know how old my mum is. She needs a sunbed. I don't care if she's 100 years old. These are the rules. And if you don't like them, you can stay somewhere else. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I don't like you now. No. What I mean is, you really wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I really don't like you now. No, you don't understand. For the last year, I've been training under a ninja master. My mind and body have been finely tuned. Finely chewed by what? No. Not finely chewed. Finally tuned. And I think it's only fair to warn you. A bloke picked an argument with me at the airport. And I nearly killed him. What did you do? Breathe on him? Morning, Jeff. <laughs> Everything okay? It's this one. That old job's worth. And what seems to be the problem? You cannot reserve a sunbed with your towel. It's against the rules. Yes, he's quite right. We've been coming here for 20 years, and the rules categorically state you cannot reserve a sunbed with your towel. Thank you. Would you like to borrow our towels, Jeff? Yeah. All right, I've got a towel. I... All right, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Here you go. You can borrow ours. Thank you. What are you doing? We are reserving our sunbeds with somebody else's towels. It's called a technicality. Us Brits have been winning by them for centuries. Breakfast, Jeff? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.
That's unbelievable, is that? What's unbelievable about it? He's traded her in for a younger model. You want to keep your eye on that one. Won't be long before he starts looking for something similar. You're not exactly a spring chicken. <laughs> oh, charmed, I'm sure. My beautiful wife may no longer be a spring chicken, but at least she's got a while before she's like you. An oven-ready turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Nana's a turkey. <laughs> Sit down, Michael, or I'll tell the bogeyman to come and get you while you're sleeping in your bed tonight. Bloody hell. What was that song them kids used to sing? There's no one quite like Grandma. Hey, talking to the bogeyman, when was the last time you spoke to Mel? I spoke to him before we got on the plane. Oh, I didn't actually speak to him. I sent him a text. A text? Who dragged you kicking and screaming into the 21st century? Thought you just sent smoke signals. Bloody hell. <laughs> I think you were exaggerating when you said 21st century. There's nothing on the screen. Does that mean he hasn't replied? Give us it here. Don't you break that. It's worth a lot of money. To who? The Antiques Roadshow? <laughs> Battery's dead. She's broken it. I knew she would. She's always been a lumpy, ham-fisted child, that one. Frick off! Mm. Oi, that's enough. Give it here. <laughs> Mum? How does the bogey man know how we've gone on holiday? He doesn't, darling. Come sit with me. I don't want to sit with you. I want to go on. What are you doing, you flaming idiot? It's in bits now. Checking the battery. You can't bear to see anyone with something you haven't got, can you? What would I want this for? A frigging doorstop? Tell Lenny and Anna your phone so she can phone Mel. Piss off. Piss off! Did you hear her? Then tell me to piss off. On. Don't talk to your mother like that. You're not that big that right, I can't put your your and you across your lap and slap your ass. I need to know the tariff so I can see if it's working properly. It's not working properly. You broke it. Turn it off for me. It's like one of those sophisticated weekend breaks on the Orient Express, isn't it? I've got a lot of family who've been to Benador. I've heard some of the people can be as rough as a dog's ass. <laughs> you don't say. I'm Troy. This is Gavin. I'm Brandy. This is Martin. Yeah, we met Martin before, but you weren't together then, were you? No, no, we're, um, just friends. Right, friends. You're both gay, aren't you? Uh, yes. And you must be from the Merseyside chapter of the Sherlock Holmes Society. I love gay people, you know. Even though their lives are often filled with tragedy and personal loss. You know, all your friends dying from the AIDS and that. Enduring a lifetime of being persecuted and victimised just for being different. But despite all that, they're always happy and laughing, aren't they? Ah. Well, we were. Don't burn it long, I ain't got much credit. Is it ringing, ma'am? I can't work it out. Well, is there somebody there? Yeah, but she's just talking rubbish. Can you hear me all right? I want to speak to Mel. Will you stop talking while I'm talking? Who was it? I don't know, but she's an ignorant git. Just kept talking over me. You rang me voicemail, you dickhead. How long's that been on? Hey, language lady. Brilliant. Now I'm out of credit. Here we are, Benny Dom, here we go! Hey. Oh, hey. That's brilliant. Oh, you've got to be joking. Watch the hold up. Right, I'm getting off. Where are you going? I'm going to talk to someone. Who are you going to talk to? I don't know, somebody to get this bloody coach moving. Oh, sit down. They'll set off when they're ready to go. The English don't complain enough. If we were in America, this coach would be up in arms. If we were in America, there'd be nothing to complain about because we'd be going somewhere decent. Are you excited, Michael? I bet you can't wait to get in that pool. No. Ungrateful little swine, and we know where he gets that from. He's not ungrateful. Thanks to you, he thinks he's booked on a seven-day holiday with Freddy Krueger. I don't want to go to Benidorm. I want to go home. Oh, well done. Has no one else got a phone? I said I'd ring him every day. You'll be seeing him soon. It's not far once we get going. He's been here all week on his own. He doesn't mix well with other people. Just because he's a successful businessman doesn't mean to say he's outgoing. He's one of the most painfully shy, introverted people I've ever known. He'd rather die than draw attention to himself. Oh. My. God. Oi, what do you think you're 
Bocadillo or going? Bocadillo. Like a what? Bocadillo is sandwich. Time for break. I said you could go for your break when you finish doing the lights. See, si. lights are finished. What are you talking about finish? There are more boxes of light back there than Blackpool Illuminations. No, it's too much. Too much? The lights here are good, yes? It look nice. Too much lights is making this chillon. You say, tacky. Tacky? Si. Tacky is vulgar, crude, without taste. I know what tacky means. OK. Oi, Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, get back here. Senor Harvey. There's 20 boxes of these in the back. If there's a single light not used in and around this shop when I get back, the only thing that will be without taste will be you. Because you'll be eating your bocadillo through a straw. No offence. Oh, it's nice as that. It's called a pink pussy. And that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. I've never had a pink pussy before. They're quite Moorish. I'm surprised I managed to keep mine down. You know, I look up at the top of that building and I still feel a bit queasy. I know what you mean. Jacqueline and I both get dizzy in high heels, so you can imagine how I felt up there. Do you know, I just have to close my eyes and I'm back up there on the top of that roof. Terrified of saying the wrong word and being either shot or chucked over the edge by that long haired lunatic. Yes, I must admit I've had more than a few sleepless nights since. Hang on a minute, you weren't up there. Wasn't I? No. No, you definitely weren't up there with us. All that business on the top of the roof with the helicopter and all that? No, you were down here looking after the kids. We haven't got any kids. Not our kids. Do you not remember? You watched it from down here. Was that that wedding on the beach? Where what's-his-face turned up on a parachute? Yes. Yeah, I thought I was. Oh, you two must think I'm going mad. Not mad? No. More clinically insane. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. <laughs> oh, hi, mate. You all right? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Could I have a... Right, yeah, that, that'll be fine, thanks. Just checked in? Mmm, absolutely. A few beers to settle the old jet lag. <laughs> jet lag? Where have you come from? Croydon. It was just a joke. All right. Missy's not down, yeah? Forgotten her name? No, no, um... Well, well we've, we've kind of, uh, well... We've separated. I'm here with a friend. All right. I normally offer my sympathy, but how can you both shut at a sour-faced old cow? Well, we're still in touch, kind of. Here you are, Martin. Look after that, will you? I think I've got the squids. Are the bogs over there, yeah? Uh, yes. Yeah, you've done all right for yourself there, mate. Where'd you find that one? No, 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 she's not, um... We're, we're not, uh... Well, uh... Yeah, I, uh... I suppose I could have done worse. This girl, she's with you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that one's yours. Don't want a sunbed. I want a scooter. Why can't we go to Mel's shop now? Just lie down, ma'am. Relax, you're on holiday. Yeah, chill out, for God's sake. I don't know what you're sitting down for. Mel will have plenty for you to be getting on with in the new shop. I'm on me holidays. You are an employee of Mel Harvey Leisure Industries Limited. Not that he's ever had a word of thanks for giving you the job. My dad didn't want a job from Mel. Exactly. Never asked that man for a penny. If you didn't want a job full stop, you were right annoyed when Mel took him on. My dad said we'll get all of Mel's money when he dies, but I don't want him to die. Don't tell Fibs, Michael. When have I ever said that? Every time you've seen Mel. Get in that pool. You're supposed to be on holiday. 
Here we are, Love's Young Dream. Them dreams have a special name, they're called nightmares. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna puke. Oh, Mel. Mel! Hey, cheeky Charlie, I've got something for you. Oh, thanks, Mel. What are you gonna call me when you landed? The battery on my phone was dead. Oh, I'll charge you up, no danger. <laughs> Do you mind? You're upsetting me, son. Talking of charging, not see your scooter as you came in. I left it plugged in at reception. No. Oh, come on, let's get it. <gasps> Mel, can I come? Of course you can. Come on. Yeah, our flight were fine, thanks. Yeah, it's nice to see you and all. Ignorant get. And if he thinks I'm going to be running round after him in his shop while I'm on my holidays, he can piss off! Well, you do work for him now. Yeah, not while I'm on my holidays, I don't. Well, if you don't mind, it's been a long morning. I've had a very nice bottle of beer. And now I'm going to get my head down for half an hour in the sun. He's supposed to be opening a shop here. <laughs> what have I just said? I think he expects you to help him while you're here. Yeah, well, I'm not. He can hardly open a shop on his own. Oh, for fuck's sake! Jesus! It's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Hey, look at me! You're not going to be on that for this whole holiday, are you? Yeah, give out some of these leaflets. It's the grand opening of Mel's new shop, six o'clock tonight. You can shove it. Oh, right, give them here. Mel said for you to go meet him in reception. I'm off for a spin. Can I come, Nanny? No, you friggin' can't. It's not a toy. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm stuck on this one as well. What's the clue? Three down. Comedy act. Sang my boomerang won't come back. Oh, I know this one. Ralph Harris. Charlie Drake. It was never Charlie Drake. She's the one that does the gardening without a bra. Oh, you're thinking of Alan Titchmarsh. It could be Tommy Walsh. It's got nothing to do with gardening. My boomerang won't come back was sung by Charlie Drake. Twelve letters. Why don't you leave it blank? And try one that goes across it. It's Charlie Drake! Five across. Oh, we won't get this one. Record producer originated the wall of sound technique. Evil can evil! Oh no! That's the wall of death. Phil Silvers. Your turn. Oh, I used to love Phil Silvers in that program. What was it called? Uh, Inspector Gadget. Sergeant Bill Court. Eleven letters. Yeah, Phil Silvers, it fits. It's Phil Spector. It's all right, son, we've got it. You've not got it. You've got it wrong. It's Phil Spector. Who played Willy Wonka in the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Gene Wilder. No, it was a fella. He had a top hat, I remember that. Gene Wilder. It's Gene, spelt with a G. Oh, was he the cat in the hat as well? Did you ever see Fritz the cat? Quite saucy for a cartoon. <laughs> What's wrong with you all? You're all just sitting here talking rubbish. You've not got one of those questions right. It doesn't really matter. Of course it matters. What if I threw a five in the phone said? Well, it's more or less a double six. I wouldn't mind. Well, you should mind. Or else, or else, what's the point of it all? Well, it's only a game. Only a game? Only a game? Did John McEnroe say it's only a game when he lost to be on Borg in the 1980 tiebreaker Wimbledon final? Did Chelsea say it's only a game when they lost 4 0 to Man United in the 94 FA Cup? Did Daley Thompson say it's only a game when he came forth in the decathlon in 1988 
after winning gold in 80 and 84? <clears throat> Who said, I can resist anything but temptation? <laughs> it, ten letters. Oh, shut up! Don French? Excuse me, have you got Wi-Fi here? We've got Scrabble behind the reception, but I think some of the letters are missing. No, Wi-Fi, you know, wireless internet. You're joking. You look if the lift's weak. Oh, there you are. They're looking everywhere for you. What sort of a dump is this? You haven't even got Wi-Fi. You shouldn't be checking emails. You're on holiday. I wasn't checking my email. I was trying to find somewhere to go out tonight. All right, well, there's Neptunes. That's mostly karaoke, but they sometimes have a singer on or a quiz. I'm not staying in this old fogey zone. People sitting in them spacker chariots, listening to Des O'Connor, drinking pale ale with a Gavascon chaser. Right, well, I'm not really one for nightclubs, to be honest. No worries, I can go on my own. We're not trying at the hip, are we? Uh, no. No, we're not. Can you lend me 20... Um, actually, better make that 30 euros. I haven't actually got any cash with me. You've come on holiday with no money. Well, it is all inclusive. Right. I'll just spend the evening sitting with a family of fat retards, wearing kiss me quick hats and singing like I do. I actually have got some money, but, um, well, it's kind of for emergencies. My mum used to say to me, always keep tuppence in your shoe, you never know when you might need to call home. Tuppence? How old are you? Eee, I can remember when you could go out Buy a new suit, have a night on the dials, fish supper, taxi home, and still have change from a fiver. <laughs> I'm 32. I'll catch up with you later. We could have a stroll up the road. There's a nightclub in the shape of a spaceship. We could look at that. I said I'll catch up with you later. Yeah, right. Somebody's got the scrabble, but I found a pack of cards in the skipping room. Are you taking the piss? Suit yourself. No, actually, leave them out, will ya? If I can't find anyone to have a game of snap with, I can always hang myself. You wouldn't be the first. <laughs> Can't believe you've not been in that pool yet. I'm not bothered. Couldn't keep you out of it last year. Does me not like me? Of course she does. What a thing to say. Your nana's funny. She's... She's never been very good at showing people she loves them. Yeah. Didn't Hitler have the same problem? My nana said that the bogeyman's going to get me when I go to sleep tonight. But I don't believe in the bogey man. Good, because he doesn't exist. Shame we can't say the same about my nana. Then why did she say it? It was just a joke. My nana's jokes are rubbish. <laughs> oi, oi, Savaloi! What are you doing? Mel's waiting for you in reception. I've just taken something out of one of the suitcases that might bring a smile to this young man's sorry-looking face. Is it my nana's head? What is it? Well, you won't know unless you take it out of the bag, will you? It's a book. I know. It's remote control. I know. Oh, my God. 
Can I play with it now? No, I only brought it with us so you could look at it. Give us it back. No way. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Oh, aren't you lovely? Mm, do you think so? Mm. <laughs> do you mind? Stop it, not here. Come on, you've got a business meeting with Mel. Mm, got a bit of business here I want to sort out first. <laughs> mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> All right? Yeah, great, thanks. Good little boat. Thanks, my dad bought it me. on the swimming pool. It's not a boat, it's an overcraft. Give it here. No, what do you say you're doing? It's not allowed. allowed. Man, it's only 11. No, oh, just keep going. Get when you're making fuck out. You can't. Oh, you've done your dick. That cost 200 quid. Mel, you come with me and you grow up. Oh, there you are. You took your time. Yeah, listen, Mel, I, I think there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. Oh, I. Yeah. When you came out here to open this shop, I assumed if you'd wanted me to be involved in it, I'd have come out here with you. How could you do that? You've been looking after the sunbed shops at home. Yeah, exactly. So now, I'm on my holidays. Right. Well, if you can afford to have a week without pay... Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. You said you were going to pay me for this week. But I was going to pay you because you were going to be working. I'm on holiday with my family. Do you think I've made Mel Harvey Leisure Industries Limited what it is today by going on holiday? I'm not spending my holiday renting out electric wheelchairs to fat, bone idle alcoholics who are too lazy to walk to the pub. All right. Wasn't talking about you. I didn't mean you. That's probably glandular, isn't it? You're not even that fat. I've seen worse. I mean, bigger. I never said I wanted you to sit in this shop. I wanted to appoint you Head of Publicity and Promotions, but it only taking a couple of hours a day. I'm sorry, Mel, it's not fair on the kids if I... Head of what? Publicity and Promotion. Out and about, meeting the public. The showbiz, glamorous side of the operation. I wouldn't expect you to sit in a shop all day. Head of Publicity and Promotion? Absolutely. A couple of hours a day? Never more than three. Well, why didn't you say? This is Mel's Mobility Shop in the heart of Benidorm. Grand opening, 6 p.m. Free bottle of bubbly with every order. This is Mel's Mobility Shop in the heart of Benidorm. Grand opening, 6 p.m. Three bottle of bubbly with every order. <laughs> Is it Mel's Mobility Shop?
is Nick doing? I told you, a bit of publicity for the shop. Right. It's just that he's been gone a while now. He's lucky to have a job. After scabbing off the social for so long, he should be on his knees thanking Mel for giving him back a bit of dignity. Where were you? You what? You weren't at the shop. I oh, know, I closed it till the grand opening. I needed the ladder to get off the bike. What have you been doing? I have been driving round Benidorm for the last three hours on a 20-foot high bike looking for somewhere to get off it. Your face is all red. I know it's all red. I've been baking in the sun covered in bloody tinfoil all afternoon. Excuse me. We were just wondering, is it fancy dress in that tunes this evening? Only nobody's told us. Piss off. Why don't you come to the front of the building and ask someone to get me? But yeah, I'm not stupid, I thought of that. But I couldn't turn the bloody music off, nobody could hear what I was saying. Excuse me, whatever it is you're selling, you can't do it here. I'm not selling anything, I'm on my holiday. Well, I'm supposed to be. Come on, let's go in. We'll get the kids up, they're having a siesta. Hang on a minute, I've not finished yet. So I kept driving to find some shade so I didn't burn to death. When to top off a perfect day, I realised I was about to run out of petrol. Well, how did you get down from this bike, then? I had to drive into the caravan park and jump off onto somebody's roof. Well, there you are, then, no problem. Hang on, I've still not finished. I don't know how old this caravan was, but I went straight through the roof. Oh, my God. <laughs> But the good news is, nobody was home. The bad news is, it was locked from the outside. It took me another bloody hour to get out of it! You haven't left that bike in the caravan park, have you? Left it there, I'll wrap it around your bloody neck if I see it again! <gasps> what are you all laughing at? You've got a big mark across your head. <laughs> Right, you can all frig off. That's it, we're going home. <laughs> Come on, I've had oh. enough. We're getting the kids and we're going home. So what's going on? Apparently, he's been riding round Benidorm on a 20 foot high runaway bike. All right. Yeah, well, you can kick your nose up. I want nothing to do with you. I want nothing to do with you. It's not fancy dress then? No. Your father was never lucky on the roads either. In the early 80s, he bought a car that would only turn left. It once took him two days to come back from Asda. You see, they found Gary Glitter. I wonder where he's been dressed like that. No idea. Let's face it, the one thing that family was lacking was an angry, oven-ready cowboy. So we're going to this shop opening, six o'clock. I think I'd rather drink bleach with a Silic Bang chaser. Three drinks. I want a free glass of Spanish paint stripper. I'll shimmy over to the pool bar and get one myself, thank you. It says free champagne for everyone. Champagne? What it says here. Come on. Grab your pashmina. We've got no time at all to get ready. Oh, hello. Are you all right? Yes, I thought I'd upset you. No, you didn't. I just didn't realise we were staying somewhere that made Anne Frank's attic look like Disneyland. There's plenty to do. I got some leaflets of the surrounding area. I thought we might have a look. Got some money from the cash machine. Waterfalls of Colossa? Cayosa. It's about 20 minutes from here. That's 20 minutes from Benidorm? In what? A Harrier jet? In a car. I think it looks terribly romantic. Oh, I, I didn't mean 
Um... Now, let's get one thing straight, Martin. We came here as friends, not on more. Absolutely. I just mean the area looks romantic. Not that you and I would, you know, suddenly... <laughs> Mind you in saying that. You never know where friendships can lead. In the meantime, what about this place? It's a shop opening for mobility scooters. I can't be certain, but I think it'll be mainly old people. Yeah, old people and free champagne. You like champagne? Well, I do, but I have to be careful. Really? Oh, yeah. It can have a dangerous effect on me. In what way? Well, it has been known to make me... How can I put it? Slightly loose. You don't mean anally. Oh, for Christ's sake! Oh, God, sorry, I see what you mean. No, uh, sorry. Um, it's just, I used to know this girl at university, and if she drank too much red wine, she would, um... Well, anyway, you don't need to know about that. Yes, yes, champagne. Great idea. I'll, um, I'll go and put some clean trousers on. Is that what your mate at university used to say to you? Sorry? Oh, right, I see, yes. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, right. I'll go and get changed and then we can go out and I promise I'll try and keep up tonight. And I'll try not to shit myself. Very good. Like we'd all be home by now. Oh, stop talking rubbish. Come on, Michael, put your feet up. Dad? Yes, son. You said it'd go away, but your head's still two different colours. Couldn't you put a hat on? It looks a right dick. Don't talk about your father like that. You're trying to say he doesn't look a dick. Don't talk about your father like that. Oh, thanks for all your support. It looks funny. All right, thank you, that's enough. My mum might have an headscarf in a bag if you ask her. A headscarf? Who do you think I am, Pirates of the Frigging Caribbean? <laughs> Hiya. What have you lot been? We've been waiting for you. As soon as we caught. Another ten minutes, you missed Maddie's big entrance. <laughs> don't like the sound of that. You know you've still got that big stripe across your body, don't you? Oi. Right. If you're ready. Of course. Did we see again? Vicky Layton. People call her Sticky Vicky. She's the Benny of Legend. Yeah, you said that. She's gonna make a speech. She speaks no English. Oh, brilliant. She does not need to speak. She was a classically trained dancer. She moves with a grace and sophistication very few are blessed with. You can't still be dancing. No, she now does a magic act. Oh, right. I think she'd do a couple of tricks if we asked her. Probably best if she just cuts the ribbon. Hiya. Hola. Welcome. We don't pay, we're family. Mick. Well, I'm just making it clear to him. Thank you. Hola. Hola. If I can have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. 
I'm not one for big speeches, but I'd like to thank everyone for coming here to mark this the opening of the very first Mel's Mobility Shop. Where you don't have to be a cripple to enjoy your holiday. From small, lightweight scooters... Larger, more industrial strength model. We have something to suit all requirements and all budgets. We're also proud to introduce, for the very first time in Benidorm, our exclusive custom range. How much you care with a Mel's Mobility Invalid Chair. Although, as we've already established, you don't have to have anything wrong with you to hire from us. Although, in saying that, uh, if you no longer have the use of your legs, we won't discriminate. Although, I'm not sure how you get here in the first place. Uh, anyway, let's crack straight on with the grand opening. And to help us do that, we have someone who I'm told is a real Benidorm legend. Please welcome Miss Vicky Layton. I'm sure I've seen her before somewhere. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God, Vicky Layton. Oh. She has a kind of cabaret act where she, um... What? She, she, she pulls flowers, scarves, all kinds of things out from a... From a what? Out from a front gate. Front gate? You know, her, her lady awning. Lady awning? Mom, what are you talking about? She pulls various objects from within her flappage. Do you mean a fanny? Yes. Yes, that's, um... Yeah. Honestly, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. Well, the hell, how much did he say them lights cost? 300 euros. That was money well spent. I can nearly see a couple of them. Well, I suppose it'll look better at night. Rubbish! Oh, I'd also just like to mention that anyone who hires a scooter today will be entitled to a 5% discount on any future hire within a six-week period. Mel? Obviously, this offer is subject to certain terms and conditions. Mel? All of which can be found on our website, which is www. Mel! What the flaming hell do you want? I think your shop's on fire. used to be a magician. I'm sure you both have a lot in common. Oh, yes. How much time have you got before your first show tonight? You know. Ah. <laughs> so that's why they call you Sticky Vicky. <laughs>